Thirdly, why would I consider spiritual application for this passage is because maybe it is referred to in the New Testament in the passage Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. Anybody remember Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Does it fit? You say, well, wait a minute. I thought Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 was for an unsaved person. Right? We use that with somebody that isn't a believer. And when you tell them, Jesus is at your door of your heart knocking. If you let him in, he'll come into your heart and save you. But you know, after a while, if you read that passage, is part of a, a message that is given to the angel, which probably is the pastor of the church. And I think it's Laodicea. And it's a church. That verse is written to a church, a local church. Maybe there's unbelievers in that church. Maybe there's believers in that church. But I think the text, as you see it, can be written to believers. These are, these are, that verse is in the midst of the message to the church of the Laodicea, and they are the lukewarm church. And it is written to lukewarm believers. And he says at the end of that, Behold, uh, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man opens the door, I will come to, into him and sup with him and he with me and restore the fellowship of the believer with Christ so that they can have a not a lukewarm relationship, but a hot relationship for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I think that applies here. Because, so, not only the why, why do we spiritually apply it, but what, or how do we spiritually apply it? What if we, as the bride of Christ, are like this bride? And what if Jesus is like this husband? Think how each part of the story connects to the relationship with Christ. And so... Here we have this uh, person, I sleep, but my heart is awake. It is the voice of my beloved. My first point is for what and how it applies spiritually is respond attentively to Christ's voice. Respond to him quickly. He's knocking at the door, right? Right? And here's this woman and she's kind of half asleep and are we half asleep with spiritual things that Christ is trying to communicate to us? I mean, how often do I read my Bible and a chapter in my Bible and it wafts away like a dream? Or I'm not really attentive to the message that Christ is giving me. Or maybe I'm a little bit sluggish or sleepy in the sermon itself. I'm not connecting with things the way I need to be. And I'm drifting off in the sermon. Or perhaps, like Pastor said, we have a men's Sunday school class and there's a study there. We have shepherding groups and there's a study there. We have a Wednesday night meeting and there's a study there. A men's breakfast, there's a study there. A ladies' luncheon and there's a study there. Maybe these times are times when, as it were the Holy Spirit or Christ is knocking on our heart and wanting to get our attention about a word or a message and we kind of be are a little bit too groggy. Respond attentively to Christ's voice. I mean, if she had just heard His knocking and came, He wouldn't have even had to say, open for me. Or if she had heard the open for me, that might have been the end of it. But it wasn't. Second point is to reconcile with Christ quickly. I mean, there may have been a reason why she wasn't coming to the door. It may not have been just that she was, uh, like, sleepy. She may have had dinner plans with him. She may have had an argument with him. She may have had some kind of resentment. 
So reconcile with Christ. If He's knocking on the door of your heart for some issue that He has with you, reconcile with Christ quickly as a believer went out of fellowship with Him and in sin. I mean, maybe there is some unanswered prayer that has gotten under your skin. Or maybe there's some unexpected crisis. Or maybe there's some unrealized expectation. Or maybe it's just some kind of plain old unconfessed sin. And Christ knocks on the door of your heart. And you're like that lady lady of the sea in church. You're lukewarm and you don't care and you're despondent. And He wants to have fellowship with you. Reconcile with Christ quickly as a believer went out of fellowship with Him. Thirdly, I'd have us to focus on His expressions of love. Here He says, My sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. What do these expressions mean? And do they have kind of New Testament ties to the attitude and the promises that Christ has made to us in the New Testament? And what is this, my sister? Why would you call your wife your sister? Well, he says that right in verse 1. Look at verse 1. I have come to my garden, my sister, my spouse. Why call his spouse, his wife, his sister? Well, it's a title of permanence. And there are promises of a permanent relationship with our Savior. 1 John chapter 4, verse 24 at the end and 25 says this, If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that He has promised us, eternal life. Eternal life is not just living forever. It's an eternal relationship with Jesus Christ. And we have an eternal relationship because we are adopted children. For instance, Galatians chapter 4 and verses 4 and 5 say this, God sent forth His Son, and I'm skipping part of the verse, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Once we're adopted sons, we have a permanent relationship. My sister, you're an adopted son. I see the similarity there. Focus on His expressions of love. As He's knocking on the door of your heart and we're resisting to allow Him to have fellowship with us because of some uh, unexpected crisis or unanswered prayer or unconfessed sin, focus on His expressions of love. Selfless, loyal love expressed just with my love. Jesus wants you to know that He loves you. Even in our waywardness, Jesus loves us. John chapter 15, verse 5 says, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. What happened after Peter... Denied our Lord? Did not our Lord come and seek Peter? Even when we are wayward, Jesus wants us to know that He loves us. But God demonstrates His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even as an unbeliever, we were sought by our Lord. John chapter uh, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 10 says, This is love, that God sent forth His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. How could He display more love than that? And then this term, my dove, a, a tender term, a term of uh, chastity and faithfulness, a title, that title signifies that according to a guy named Poole. And... Uh, Just listen to Ephesians chapter 5. Remind yourselves of this passage. I know you know it. Verse 26 and 27. That's the passage that starts with, Husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for her, that He might, verse 26 goes this way, that He might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the Word, 
that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy without blemish. So, he's saying that he is providing the means of cleansing her, cleansing the church, cleansing you and I, so that we can be like a dove, chaste and faithful. And my perfect one. Now, this really gets me. My sister, my love, my dove, my perfect one. Is she perfect? If she was perfect, she should be at the door. Don't you think? Right? She's not at the door. And yet, he's knocked. He's called open for me. He said, my sister. And we don't know how much time passed between these terms of endearment and between open for me and the knocking and all these kinds of things. A lot of, a lot of time could have passed. But then he says, my perfect one. And I got to really thinking about that because, you know, sometimes the Lord rebukes us. Like in that passage, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20, it says in that passage, whom I love, I rebuke. And he did rebuke that church for being lukewarm. And a lot of times we're rebuked by the Lord because he loves us and he wants us to get right with him. And that's why he stands at the door and knocks so we can have fellowship with him. But here, the Lord also has an attitude of, You're my perfect one. Not because you're perfect. And not because this wife was perfect. But because because of His work. 